Welcome to my channel guys. So this video is going to be a double feature review. I'm going to be talking about a 2016 horror comedy drama The Love Witch. This is a requested review. One of you wanted me to talk about this movie and I'm also throwing in one random review of a Japanese horror drama from 2012 Helter Skelter. So these two movies don't really have much in common plot wise but one thing that these two movies do have in common is that both of these movies are just fucking beautifully shot. Both of these movies are eye candies. And yeah, let me stop rambling and let me start with The Love Witch. This is, like I said, a requested review. Somebody wanted me to talk about this movie. And I actually did talk about The Love Witch before. I mentioned it briefly in like my anti-Valentine's Day movies or something like that. But in this video, I'm going to talk about it more in depth, or at least I'm going to try. To be honest, I find Love Witch to be a really like hard movie to summarize and review and talk about. I have a lot of mixed feelings about it. Anyways, The Love Witch was written and directed by Anna Biller, and it stars Samantha Robinson is the main character, Elaine, who is like this modern day witch that is looking for love, looking for her perfect man, and she uses various love spells and potions in order to attract her perfect man. So one thing about The Love Witch right off the bat, as I had mentioned uh, about this movie before, is that it is beautifully, gorgeously shot. Like as far as the visuals in this movie are concerned, they are immaculate, they are perfection. This movie has the most beautiful dolled up looking color palettes that I've ever seen in any movie ever. It's just like a masterpiece. To look at and also the aesthetic of this movie is interesting because it gives you like the vibes of the movies from like the 60s or the 70s and at the same time it's also quite confusing because as far as the aesthetic and the atmosphere of this movie is concerned and even the soundtrack sometimes it gives you like those throwback vibes for those 60s or 70s movies but then i don't think that the movie necessarily takes place during those times i think it actually takes place more around our day times as evidenced by like the cars that we see characters driving sometimes as more modern day uh, model cars and I think that at some point we even see people use cell phones in this movies unless I'm imagining things but I'm pretty sure I've seen somebody use a cell phone in this movie at least once anyways the aesthetic of this movie definitely gives you like those throwback vibes and like the color palettes that they use for these movies also and also the way that the main character Elaine looks in this movie the way she is styled everything from her hair and makeup and her wardrobe that also gives you like those throwback vibes and like the way that the other characters are styled as well now I'm not a huge fan of the movies from the 60s or the 70s but I do appreciate the aesthetic of those movies and I can definitely appreciate the aesthetic for this movie like I said like I'm going to keep mentioning that because that's honestly like my favorite part about the movie and that is what I think makes the movie definitely worth checking out is just the visuals alone now as far as the actual movie goes i do feel like it's a little bit over long it did not need to be as long as it was and i do feel like the way certain events are presented in this movie feels a little bit drawn out and the movie does drag a little bit at times and also it seems like there is not a whole lot going on in this movie plot wise like it doesn't even seem to be a plot at times it seems to be kind of like disjointed and kind of random at times although the movie definitely does have a plot but the way that it's presented it doesn't really seem like it has a plot well at least to me like it was a little bit hard to sit through certain parts of this movie the main character Elaine I have mixed feelings about her at times she really annoyed me and um I don't know really what to make of her. I get the like the vibe that the movie is supposed to have like a certain feminist angle to it and like Elaine supposed to be like a feminist character. And I was initially really excited by that. I was preparing to sit down to watch this movie and to be chanting girl power the whole time. But I don't know if this character actually felt empowering to me though. The way that she acts and certain things that she says really rubbed me the wrong way. There was this one scene where she was um, having lunch with somebody, with this other female character, and she was giving her like advice on how to 
I think like how to attract a man or how to keep a man or something along those lines. And the points that she was making seemed very backwards to me. She seemed a little bit uh, like a step forward wife to me at times. And she annoyed me because of that a little bit. So I don't know what to make of this character. I don't know if I like this character or I don't like this character. I also wasn't always crazy about how the actress that portrays Elaine how she portrayed her and her acting. I do feel like as far as her look is concerned, she is perfect for this movie and I do feel like that's why they cast her for this movie because as far as like the aesthetic of this movie goes, she fits perfectly. She just has like that kind of face that very much so gives you like the old movie wives and the way that they styled her. It fits like her makeup and hair. It fits her very well and she looks the part for this movie. But I don't think that her acting is all that great throughout the movie. She seemed a little bit wooden to me at times and she seemed a little bit stiff. But eventually like I kind of got used to her acting style and it, did, it, and it didn't bother me as much. But in the beginning of the movie her acting was kind of bothering me. And like I said once again I don't know if I liked or disliked her character in this movie. And that made me kind of confused as I was watching this movie. Because I didn't know if I was rooting for her or if I was rooting for her to fail. I'm sorry if it's kind of confusing and all over the place but like I said I find this movie to be kind of hard to talk about and I find it kind of hard to review because I don't know like I have mixed feelings about it. Another thing about this movie is that even though it's built as like a horror it is definitely not like a horror movie in a traditional sense. It doesn't even have a whole lot of horror elements in this movie. I mean it does have some but they are sprinkled in this movie very like far few and far in between and for the most part it it plays more like a um, I don't know I guess like a romantic comedy drama thing or maybe like a dark fantasy or something but not necessarily like horror like it's definitely not a horror movie in a traditional sense don't go in there expecting that because you would definitely would be disappointed if you view this movie expecting it to be like straight up horror like I would still say it's horror but it's definitely like a little bit different so overall I wasn't like a huge fan of this movie but I can definitely appreciate it for what it is. I definitely do feel like it had tons of potential and certain parts of this movie I really like. But it's just overall, as a whole, I was not a huge fan of the movie. I did struggle, like I said, to get through certain parts of the movie. I do feel like it kind of dragged in a way and it was a little bit kind of blurry as far as the actual plot of this movie was concerned. Like there wasn't a whole lot of plot to begin with and I do feel like they kind of stretched it out to to meet up a certain time limit mark and it did not need to be stretched out like that but it's just my opinion i would still highly recommend it i definitely do feel like it is worth checking out it is by no means a bad movie it's just certain parts of it didn't really resonate with me but like i keep saying to y'all it is beautifully shot. It is just fucking gorgeous to look at. I rated this movie before when I briefly mentioned it in another video and my rating for this movie remains the same. I would give this movie a 10 out of 10 for the visuals alone and I would give it like a 6 out of 10 for the actual story. Now moving on to Helter Skelter. Whenever I think about The Love Witch, I always think about Helter Skelter. I guess because I had originally watched both of those movies around the same time. So Helter Skelter was was written by Arisa Kaneko and based on a manga of the same name by Kyoko Okazaki and directed by Mika Ninagawa. I am not familiar with the original manga that this is based on but it honestly sounds pretty interesting. This movie stars the actress Erika Sawajiri is the main character Lyrico who is this huge Japanese pop idol beloved and worshipped by many who is addicted to plastic surgery. What a lot of people don't realize about Lyrico is that her perfect appearance is all completely manufactured. Everything on her is fake other than, and I quote, that was actually said to her about her in the movie by one of the other characters. Everything on her is fake except for her eyeballs, ears, fingernails, and pussy. Excuse my French, but that's exactly how they describe her in the movie. Lilico struggles to maintain her 
place on top and eventually it begins to take its toll on her. Both her body and her mind begin to deteriorate from the side effects of the various plastic surgeries. So same as like the Love Witch, one thing about Helter Skelter that, I, that you absolutely cannot take away from this movie is that it is fucking beautiful to look at. The way that it's shot, the cinematography, the colors, the use, everything about it is just gorgeous and the actress that plays the main character, she really does look so beautiful that it's almost scary. It looks unreal and like otherworldly, like a Japanese Barbie doll or something. Eriko is also a quite interesting character. She is not even likable, like there are times when she comes off as straight up evil and cruel. She is straight up despicable at times, but I couldn't help but to feel bad for her because it was apparent to me that underneath it all she was she was scared she was scared that without it without her beauty or without her being an idol she would have nothing she's like addicted to it she was brainwashed by this industry she's a slave to it now this movie is over two hours long and I wouldn't say that it needed to be quite that long. I mean, don't get me wrong. It starts quite interesting. It's crazy. It's hectic. It's all over the place. It gives you like an interesting representation of how this industry is and how it takes its toll on people like Lyrical, somebody that's in it. It's all good. But I would say that once this movie passes like about an hour mark, it does start to drag a lot. There was a lot of filler in this movie that I don't think necessarily needed to be there. To me, the best parts of this movie were, in fact, those scenes with, that deal with Lyrico's um, deterioration, especially like her mental um, issues that she begins to experience more and more so throughout the movie. Those were the most interesting scenes to watch the most unsettling and even a little and even mildly disturbing at times and it was also accompanied with the craziest visuals that the movie had to offer there's just so many unforgettable crazy visceral scenes in this movie that i feel like even if one day i completely forget what the movie was even about certain scenes from this movie would just pop like i would never forget certain scenes of this movie even if i remember them out of context also this movie had like a really weird sexual angle to it there was like a lot of um sex scenes that i personally don't think was necessary and felt very um what is that word gratuitous gratuitous i can't speak i don't know how to say the damn word i think sometimes people uh misunderstand when i talk like that and think that i am just like a prude and i just don't like sex scenes in movies period that is not exactly the case i don't really have problem with sex scenes or nudity in movies as long as it fits as long as it feels like the inclusion of those scenes in the movie is like organic and it actually belongs there when it's just excessive and just seems to be thrown in there just for the sake of being thrown in there for like shock value or whatever the case may be then i'm not a huge fan of and in this movie i definitely feel like the whole sexual angle was way overused and thrown in there for the shock value a lot of times and in a way i can kind of see why so much sex stuff was involved in this movie as they were trying to show us like this objectification of women by the by this industry now just like the love witch this movie is also even though marketed is a horror movie is not your traditional horror so don't go into this one expecting like a traditional horror movie either it plays out more like a psychological drama for the most part there are also slight body horror elements in this movie throughout as far as like the whole um plastic surgery aspect goes there were certain scenes that were kind of unsettling to look at and there's also this whole aspect of the main character's body deteriorating so as far as this movie's rating goes i guess i will have to once again and give like a separate rating for the visuals and what and for the story itself so as far as the visuals goes this movie once again for me gets like a 10 out of 10 and as far as the plot goes i would give it like a 7 out of 10 even though i wasn't always happy with how the story in this movie was executed i do feel like it raises awareness to some pretty interesting topics so thank you guys for watching let me know in the comments if you had seen any of those movies and what did you guys think about them let me know in the comments what are your favorite visually stunning horror movies and give this video a like if you are new to this channel and are enjoying my reviews so far that then go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you wouldn't miss any future videos and i will see you in the next one okay bye